In this video, we're going to cover the second part of our linear function, which is the initial value or the b value. In this PowerPoint, we're going to talk about the table of values with b, how to find it on the graph, other names for it, finding the b using algebra, finding the rule with a table of values or two points. First, I want to review two important things about a Cartesian plane. Here's a Cartesian plane. This is the x-axis and this is the y-axis. Very important as we move along. And before we begin, I need to remind you that we have so far looked at two types of linear functions, the direct linear function and the partial linear function. Both of them share this rule, but in this case the direct linear function has a b that's equal to zero because it passes through the origin. And so each function depends on where the function passes through the y-axis. This one passes through zero, so it's direct. This one passes through something other than zero, so it's partial. This is what you already know about b, or the initial value. When we've looked at table of values, in addition to the slope, sometimes you've had to add or subtract a number from it because you weren't quite getting the y value that you needed to match with the x. So here's the table of values. You know the slope is 4 by whatever way you found it but you still need to add 1 to finish the rule because 1 times 4 doesn't give you 5. So in this case you knew to add 1 and so your b value was 1. And 1 is also called the initial value. But what about on a graph? So the initial value on a Cartesian plane is the number where the function crosses the y-axis. So remember at the beginning of this PowerPoint I said to you this is the x-axis, this is the y-axis where the function crosses the y-axis is the initial value. In this graph, you can see that the function crosses this y-axis at the number 2. So, the initial value, or b, of this function is a positive 2, very simply. So because of this, because of what I just showed you, another name for b, or the initial value, is called the y-intercept. Literally, where the function intercepts the y-axis. So just to list off a few names for the b value, you can call it b, call it the y-intercept, call it the initial value, you could say where the graph scar starts, that number that comes after the slope, whatever. Um, there are several names for the b value as long as you know where it goes, how to find it, it really doesn't matter. You need to know how to identify it. I want you to look at each graph and identify the initial value y-intercept b, whatever you call it. Look at each graph and tell me what is the b value. So in this case, the b is crossing the negative 1, so b is negative 1. In this case, it crosses the y-axis at negative 3, so your b is negative 3. And in this case, it crosses the y-axis at 20, so b is 20. And finally, over here, the b is actually 0 because it crosses through the y-axis at 0. And now, based on the last example that you just did, I want to note something important about direct linear functions. A direct linear function, you already know, passes through the origin or the coordinates are 0, 0. Something like this. This does not mean that the initial value doesn't exist. The initial value does exist, it's just 0. So if you were to say to me, oh well, there's no initial value, you're wrong. There is an initial value, it's 0. And the initial value of a direct linear function will always be zero because it passes through the origin. So um, a general rule for a direct linear function would be y is equal to ax, where a is your slope, plus zero because zero is where it crosses the y-axis. I want to give you a table of values and find the rule for it. Something that you should be very comfortable with by now is finding the slope. By using this rule, if we do 15 minus 8 over 9 minus 7, we get that the slope is positive 3.5. So if we plug it into our rule so far, we have y is equal to 3.5x plus b. Now we know that it's not enough, because if we do 7 times 3.5, we get 24.5, and that's definitely not 8, so we're looking at maybe subtracting something. You can try in your head to figure out what you need to add or subtract. Or, I'm going to show you something a little bit new. 
At this point, we know that we have y is equal to 3.5x plus b. In our table of values, we have three points or coordinates, 7, 8, 9, 15, and 11, 22. Now, I'm going to be using the word points and coordinates interchangeably, meaning they're, it means the same thing. At my x and y coordinates, my points, whatever. So in our table of values that I gave you here, you have three points given to you. Here they are. Each of these represent an x, y for our function. So this is x, y, this is x, y, this is x, y. Each of them represent something like this for our function. To find b, you must use one of the points that I give you to plug into the rule that you have. So here is the rule that I have because I found that this is my slope. I'm going to take the first point, 7, 8. 7 is x, 8 is y. I'm going to plug it in here as x and y, and I'm going to simply solve for b. And I get that b is equal to negative 16.5. So algebraically, you can easily find what your b value is. So by finding the slope first, which we did, it was 3.5, and by using the first point, 7, 8, of this table of values, we managed to find what b was algebraically. And so the final rule for this function is y equals 3.5x minus 16.5, because that's what we found our b to be. Does it matter which point we use from the table? Now, in the example that I gave you, I used 7, 8. Um, but what happens if I use any of the other points? So I want you to try it yourself. Solve for b by using the second point in the table and knowing that the slope is 3.5. And see what you get. Here's my rule with my slope, not knowing what b is. This is me using the second point, 9, 15. So 9 is x, 15 is y. I plug it in. 15 is equal to 3.5 times 9. And look, I get the exact same b as I did with the first point. When I use 7, 8, I got negative 16.5, and now when I use 9, 15, I also get negative 16.5. And what about the last point? The last point in our table is 11, 22. So again, if we were to use this with our 3.5 slope, what would we get as the initial value? So here's our rule again. Plugging in x is 11 and y is 22, we also get the same b. So in conclusion, we can always find the slope given a table of values or just two points. So you know that you need to use your formula. Um, using the slope in your y equals ax plus b rule, you can pick any coordinate that I give to you to solve for b algebraically. I also want you to keep in mind that b can be any rational number. So b can be negative, positive, a whole number, a decimal, a fraction, and so on. b can be any rational number. After using the formula for slope, the y2 minus y1, find the initial value of the following tables algebraically. Then, in the end, state what the rule or equation of the function is. So here are three table of values, and again, using the formula for slope, so you find your slope, algebraically find b. So for the first table, you would get your slope is negative 2.5. And if you were to plug in any x, y point here into just this first part, you would find that b is equal to a positive 6. For this one, you would find that the slope is 5.5. Very easy, y2 minus y1. But then when you plug in a point, you should get that b is equal to 0. So you could put 5.5x plus 0, but I don't bother putting it at all. And in the last table, you find the slope, you get 9.3. Again, slopes and initial values can be decimals, negatives, whatever. Um, and then when you plug in any of these points to the first part of this equation to solve for b, you get that b is equal to 3.5. What if you're given just two points? Here are simply two points. Can you find the equation of the line passing through these two points? So the first thing that you should already know how to do, because we've done it in last class, was finding the slope. So you call this x1, y1, you call this x2, y2, you plug it into your rule, you get that your slope, or your a, is 9. So at this point, you're at y is equal to 9x plus b. But now you need to find b. Use any of these two points, so either this point or this point, to find b. 
So taking what I have with my slope, I'm actually going to use um, 5 comma 57 to plug into my equation. So I get that 57 is y and, and 5 is x. And if I do the work, I get that b is equal to 12. And had you used the first point, negative 3, negative 15, I promise that you would have gotten the same b. So when I ask you for the equation of the line passing through these points, well, the final answer is y equals 9x plus 12. I want you to try it yourself. I want you to find the equation of the line passing through the following two points, kind of exactly like I did in the last slide. So here are three points. So take a second and find the slope and then algebraically find b. In this case, you get that your slope is negative 6, um, and then when you plug in either negative 633 or 10 negative 63, you would find that your b is actually negative 3. Um, over here, your slope is negative 3 and your b is 2.6, so putting it together, you get this as your rule. And finally, you get here that your slope is 6, and if you plug in any of these two points, you could solve that b is 4. That is the end of this lesson on initial value. Our next lesson will be on finding the rule of a function, but this time only given a graph on a Cartesian plane.